Hey there, this is Will again from Untied Games, and I'm here with a new devlog. This is devlog number 22, and as you can see today, I'm going to be playing Demon Sim. Uh, if you're out of the loop, this is a game I made for Low Res Jam last month, and uh, the only rule of the game jam is that it has to be in a 64 by 64 pixel resolution. And I explained that in my last video, but today we're actually going to be playing the game, and I'm going to be telling you all about my design choices and, uh, you know, how I made the game, why I decided to make the enemies the way they are, stuff like that. And uh, you'll be happy to know that uh, the results of the jam are in, and Demon Sim got fifth place overall, so that's pretty cool. And I think there were about 200-some uh, entries, so uh, we did a really good job. So let's get started here. So let's see what the game is all about. So I can move around, I've got my little character here, I can press A to jump, although I'm using the uh, PlayStation controller with input mappers, so... <laughs> I can jump, I can attack, and if I press the button at just the right time I can do this triple attack, and I can also dash with B or any of the shoulder buttons. So yeah, let's, uh, let's see what we got going here. Got some basic stuff here, and uh, one of the things I'd like to mention here is I, I teach the player something right away. And it's not the, it's not just these controls here, right? Uh, what I'm teaching the player right away is that... Uh, see this see this ledge here? You can't climb it. Like, you can't do a perfect jump on top of it. You just don't jump high enough, right? So immediately you have to do this kind of double jump thing to get up top. And if you don't realize that right away, you'll see that you can also slide down walls. So right away, I'm teaching the player uh, a new mechanic without actually telling them anything through, like, text. You know, and that's something I want to strive to do in all of my games when I can, is uh, to basically teach the player by having them do it, you know? So anyway, we've got this kind of creepy vibe going on. You can hear this creepy music in the background made my, by my good friend Charlie McCarran. Is also doing the music for Atmocopter, so you know it's going to be good. Whoa, look at this guy. So this is a spectral wolf that we've got going here, and what he does is he continuously hops towards the player, and uh, you, you basically just want to take him out quickly. Uh, and you'll notice he dropped a heart. Uh, enemies do drop hearts if you're missing a heart, uh, just to prevent like clutter and stuff in the world. So anyway, we've got some stairs here, you can go up and down stairs, and we've got an insurmountable obstacle, right? Well, not so much, because you know we can wall climb. And if the player didn't necessarily learn that they could wall climb on the uh, other insurmountable wall over here, over here they definitely will learn. Uh, and they'll just learn by doing it, they'll jump at the wall, and they'll realize they can keep doing that. And it, it's worked pretty well. Sometimes uh, <laughs> sometimes you get kind of stuck in this pit here, but doing another jump fixes that right up. And spikes work just about, you know, as well as you'd expect. <laughs> they take away one heart and they uh, propel you back outward. So the, uh, the good thing about the spikes is I don't have to teach the player anything there. The player already knows, most of the time, that spikes are harmful. <laughs> so here we've got another wolf. I'll just take him out real quick. And uh, the blood effects are really awesome, I love those. And this guy, you do not want to be close to <laughs> when he puts his hammer down here. So when you attack him, he starts moving backwards, which is kind of cool. I wanted to get uh, a lot of enemy variety, um, but I, un I ended up only having like three enemies and a boss, so it wasn't everything I hoped for, and I wanted to make an even bigger game, but I wasn't quite able to. But I, uh, I tried to basically do, instead of en enemy variety, I wanted to give the player uh, a variety of experiences based on how the enemies are placed. So I tried to use the enemy placement rather than uh, many different types of enemies to give the player an interesting experience. So this is a part of the game a lot of people have trouble with. It's a uh, vertical corridor. And I would like to make wall jumping a little easier, but you'll see I can probably do it flawlessly here. <laughs> so the problem a lot of people have is they will... let me start over again. They will jump, and jump, and jump, and then they'll do... 
something like, whoops, something like that, or maybe they'll do something like this. And what happens is uh, they're pressing left before they jump. And what you actually have to do is you have to jump and then press left to change directions. I wanted to go with very uh, Mega Man-esque controls here, and I feel like I succeeded, but if I had to do a patch in the future, which I probably will, I will make this a little easier in terms of wall jumping. Like, you should be able to wall jump if you're just, like, next to a wall, for example. Um, so yeah, it's also easier to do if you're dashing, I've found. So anyway, let's see what uh, awaits in the next corridor. So this enemy is a wizard. And you'll see he shoots a little thing, and if I attack him, he warps away. So there's actually two ways to kill this guy. Whoops, <laughs> got a little too close. So first of all, you can reflect his shots. That's the first way. Let's see if he does another one here. Oh, but collides with terrain. Otherwise, you can also uh, attack him while he's casting, and then he will take damage. So there's basically two ways to kill that guy. Um, yep, uh, well I guess uh, the other way to kill that guy is uh, you do a dash attack. So see, right now if I attack him, he'll warp away, right? But if I wait and do it again with a dash attack, he dies. Now the dash attack does two damage, right? And uh, basically it strikes before the wizard is able to warp away. Which I wanted to be like a kind of cool mechanic that you might be able to figure out while playing. And the dash attack is basically the same as this uh, final attack in my three hit combo here. Um, you'll see the animation is basically the same as that. And that's the one that deals two damage. So, anyway, I kind of introduced the player to the wizard in a safe situation. Basically, the wizard is the only thing on the screen. And then I kind of put him in a different situation. You know, where you have to fight a wolf and then a wizard, just to kind of reinforce the concept. And I'm going to take this guy out right here. Another kind of uh, issue that the game has is um, the dash attack. Uh, sometimes you take damage because you uh, end up too close to an enemy. So that's, again, something I would fix in a future patch, like that right there. So. Here I introduce a wizard in a slightly more dangerous situation based on where he's placed, because like you come up this corridor, right, and then this, the camera scrolls and you're not expecting to see a wizard. Fortunately I can take him out with a dash attack just fine. And I wanted to kind of uh, have a little theme of repetition here where you're uh, coming up all these switchbacks. Basically uh, a switchback in video games, and I guess in real life, is when you start out going to the right then you turn around and you go to the left a little. Now, again, uh, this is very Mega Man inspired. A lot of Mega Man levels do this to uh, create a sense of uh, longness, I guess, for the level. It, it basically it feels like the level's a little longer when the path is windier. You know what I mean? So by having these switchbacks with only a few uh, assets for my game, I'm able to make the level feel a little longer. And that was kind of, uh, you know, a product of the limited time frame I had to work with for the game jam, too. So here, coming up ahead here, is an excellent example of an enemy whose placement makes it very difficult to kill. Now I did the right thing here, which was wait for it to attack. Because if I had uh, tried to jump attack or something, I would have a very, uh, unoptimal attack vector. <laughs> um, unless I did something like that, maybe, or, you know, whatever. You can attack in midair, too, but I would land on the spikes almost, right? So it's best to wait for the enemy to make its move. So that's just another example of how I'm able to use enemy placement and level design uh, to compensate for a lack of enemy variety. So anyway, coming up ahead here, uh, is our boss. And this is unfortunately the only boss in the game. I wanted to make more, I just didn't have time. But uh, let's let's see what we got here. And I gotta give uh, Charlie props for the really good music in this section. I love it a lot. So you'll notice he uh, will do his fireball attack. And of course that hurts. I just tried to jump over it. 
but if you try to attack him, he will warp away. And he will do that no matter what, even if he's uh, in his casting animation. So I'm going to try not to die here, but... Uh, so this is the point where you would have to figure out that this is basically kind of a fight borrowed from Zelda, <laughs> where you can bounce his fireball back and forth until it finally hits him, and then he does this special attack, which isn't too hard to avoid, but it can be if you're in the wrong spot. So anyway, a lot of people end up not figuring out, actually, that uh, you can bounce the fireballs back. Oh boy, I'm really close. <laughs> it's kind of dicey. And the fireball does get a little faster as it uh, goes back and forth there. So anyway, I've beaten the boss, and now I'm in basically uh, kind of the new game plus, or the second quest, if you will. I'm in a harder version of the level. Um, and so yeah, let's see, let's see what this harder version has in store for us. So right off the bat, again, a perfect example of an enemy whose placement is very difficult. So again, even though, uh, even though this is the same level and the same layout, the uh, placement of the enemies is significantly harder than the first section. So right here we've got a wizard. Wizards are just, uh, by default, harder than wolves. We've got a wolf at the top of the stairs, so I can't necessarily hit uh, as I'm going up the stairs. I really wanted to make more to this game. I didn't want to just have to copy-paste the level over again with a different color theme. But uh, that's that's how it ended up, because I just ran out of time. I had uh, 2D Con in the middle of the... Um, in the middle of the game jam, so I was really, really busy. Here we've got a wolf right at the top of this vertical corridor. You can just let him jump right off. Whoops. I accidentally fell there. See, I gotta make wall jumping a little easier. Up here we have another giant knight. Get out of here. <laughs> here we've got a wolf up top and a wizard down below, so you can kind of choose your path. Um, and this... Uh, this little block here that I'm standing on, this was actually empty, uh, if you remember, in the first section of the game. And I wanted to have like a power-up or a save point here, so if I if I do some kind of patch, I will make this like the continue area, I think. Like if you die while fighting the boss, you'll respawn back here. And just in kind of that safe spot, you know? Because uh, one of the other things I do for game jam sometimes is I make the game hard in kind of stupid ways to compensate for the short length of the game. So in uh, this game, for example, if I die right now, I would have to go all the way back to the beginning. And it wouldn't be like the second quest either, it would be all the way back to the title screen. And, you know, part of that is artificial difficulty, like I, you know, I want to make the game just a little bit harder. But also, part of it is just I didn't have time to make that happen, you know? <laughs> I didn't have time to make save points or any sort of thing like that. And I would really like to make this a full game eventually, I think. I think it would be a lot of fun. I love those blood effects. <laughs> oh, man. Where'd you go? Oh, there he is. <laughs> so he, uh... What happened there is... Um, again, it's difficult placement because he's uh, basically unattackable as I'm climbing this wall, right? So what happened is he jumped off as I went down, and because he wasn't in the camera bounds, uh, no logic was performed on him, so he was just sitting up there uh, because gravity wasn't able to um, happen for him. So that's kind of interesting. A giant knight up at the top of the stairs here. Get out of here. Here we have a trickier opponent, but since we know we can reflect fireballs, he's out of here. So I, uh, I don't think I was able to tell you guys this originally, but uh, originally I wanted to um, basically have the player go through this area that's uh, you wouldn't be able to tell because it uses my grand library tile set, but it's supposed to be like the basement of a church, right? And uh, you fight this priest at the end, who it turns out is worshipping a dark god, right? So once you fight the priest, he would then cast you out 
uh, like across the lands, and you'd have to journey back to the church through all these different areas, kind of Castlevania style. And then finally, at the end, you would fight the priest, who turns into a demon. So that was the initial goal behind Demon Sim, but I wasn't able to do that, so I ended up with this kind of second quest thing. So this is a much harder version of the boss, and uh, he sometimes throws two fireballs, which is actually a glitch. <laughs> I just left it in because I didn't know why it happened, and I didn't have time to fix it. So you'll notice I have to hit the fireball uh, many more times, and it gets faster and faster before finally it hits him. And you can actually uh, kill these fireballs too, although it's kind of dangerous. I'm almost dead, so I hope I don't have to do this all over again. Uh, we'll see. Pretty good at video games, you guys, so I think we got this. So this is the trick to doing this section, is just moving very slowly there. Ooh, that was close. Come on. Oh boy. That's really, really fast. Because, <laughs> yeah, if you like, uh, if you move back and forth to run from those fireballs, uh, like if you're running across the screen or whatever, uh, to run from those fireballs that rain down on you, it'll be very, very dangerous. So anyway, I killed the boss. Uh, there's not too much fanfare, except there is a credits scene. This wasn't in the first version of the game, I had to patch this in. So I get a little quote there, game clear, to be continued, question mark. So yeah, let's just watch the credits here as we uh, enjoy Charlie's music. <sighs> so yeah, I hope this... Uh, was able to give you some kind of insight into how I design levels for games. And a lot of these principles are not applicable only for this game, they're uh, things you can apply to any game, including Atmocopter, which uh, is, you know, it's something I'm still working on, it's something I'd... Uh... <laughs> you know, a lot of these principles are able to be applied elsewhere, it's, I guess, what I'm trying to say. So anyway, thank you for playing. If you uh, if you want to play this game, there is a download link in the description once again. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Let me know what you thought of Demon Sim. Uh, it's totally free. Feel free to download it. Uh, share it with your friends. It's a fun game. I mean, you just watched it. So yeah, you be the judge. Was it fun? You tell me. So I will be back uh, very soon, probably with a another speed spreading video or a devlog. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.